is Serena from the digital team. May you be happy and blessed, not just on Christmas Day, but throughout the year. I pray you have a very Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year. Hi, this is Stephen from the digital team here at Family Talk, and I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This is Roger Marsh for Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk, a part of the Dobson Family Institute. Throughout the entire month of December, we're highlighting our most listened to broadcasts from the past year. Now, before we hear one of those popular shows, I want to share some news with you. A gracious donor of our ministry has gifted us with a generous matching grant for this Christmas season. This effectively doubles every donation we receive until we've reached our goal. Learn how you can be a part of this match by going to drjamesdobson.org. That's drjamesdobson.org. Or you can call for more information at 877-732-6825. That's 877-732-6825. And now, here's another one of our most popular broadcasts from 2019 on this edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Today on Family Talk. Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. James Dobson, and you're tuned in to Family Talk. Today, we're going to hear the second half of an interview with Dennis Prager, one of the best-known broadcasters in this country. He's an author, a speaker, and a philosopher. I think he's one of the most brilliant men in America. Dennis is an authority on the Torah, or what we refer to as the first five books of the Old Testament. What makes the interview you're about to hear so interesting, in my view, is that uh, Dennis is an Orthodox Jew and I'm a deeply committed Christian, and we're gonna share our views on the American culture, on values, and on the institution of the family. Here is my recorded interview with Dennis Prager, and we're gonna begin just after I ask him to elaborate on the clash between biblical truth and leftist ideology. I've studied the left my whole life. I was at the Russian Institute of Columbia for my graduate work. So I studied Russian. I went to the Soviet Union, studied Marx. I studied all of this. And I've always wanted to understand what does the left really stand for? You see, if I said to you, you're a Christian, so tell me, uh, what should I read to know what you stand for? You say, go to the Bible. You ask a Muslim, what he'll say? Go to the Quran. You ask a Buddhist, the works of, of, of Buddha. So ask a leftist, what book should I read to understand what you stand for? You will get no answer. So, well, there are so many, I don't know what to say. So I realized there isn't really, a, so to speak, a leftist Bible. It only hit me in the last 10 years. It took me a life of study to realize the left stands for chaos. What does God do for six days? God doesn't only create. The word create is only used three times. What God does more than create is make order. Mm. It's all about order, separation, separation between man and God. They're not the same thing anymore. All the gods of the ancient world were human beings in in heaven. Separation between male and female. It's the only separation God cares of in the human species. God doesn't give a hoot about race or anything else. He cares about male, female. God created the human being, male and female. He created them. The left is destroying every distinction. It destroys order. They hate order. They hate the order of parent-child. They hate the order of male-female. They hate the order of God-man. So that's what it is. These are people who thrive on chaos. And if there's chaos, there will be rampant evil. That's why I fear the left and fight the left as much as I do. Let me tell you why I think that's true. Uh, When given a choice between chaos and tyranny, people will always take tyranny because chaos is terribly disturbing. And and if somebody stands up there and says, I can bring order, uh, they will go with him. That's been the lesson of history. And so this dilemma between chaos and tyranny uh, will lead to greater power. It's a search for power. It's a grab for power. That is right. I totally agree. When I think what animates these people, what would animate a a middle-class female teacher to say, there's no such thing as boys and girls? This woman is not thinking, oh, I want tyranny. 
it will lead to tyranny. That's where I totally agree with you. But on any conscious level, it's chaos. And I, I don't know why. I know the opposite of order is exactly what you say, is tyranny. It must lead to it. People cannot live with disorder. So we have created in America an amazing amalgam of order and freedom, unique in human history, without tyranny. And they are ruining it. And when I went to Normandy very many years ago, and I saw thousands and thousands of uh, graves of soldiers, most of whom were 20 or 22 or 19 years old. And I said to myself, you know, these kids, these guys, they died to preserve America and preserve liberty. Then I have to live to preserve America and liberty. And that, I took that oath at Normandy, and that's why I fight. Tell me about your trip to Russia when you were younger. That made a profound yes, it's in Im- the film. impact on yes, you. Yes, and they got it right. They did it beautifully. They re- replicated my hotel room. They replicated me mm-hmm. <laughs> with this young guy. And uh, the Israeli government would send Israeli uh, young people into the Soviet Union to smuggle in Jewish religious items and smuggle out names of Jews who wanted to leave. It was was somewhat dangerous. How old were you? Just turned 21 years old. And uh, anyway, the Israeli government, through friends of mine who knew me, is an incredible beyond belief coincidence, learned this American kid. He knows Judaism, he knows Russian, and he knows Hebrew. He's like ideal. They couldn't send in Israeli kids after 67 because the Soviets broke off diplomatic relations with Israel in the Six-Day War in 1967. So they were sending in foreign Jewish kids. So I was sent into the Soviet Union for a month. And while I was there to keep my sanity, I would get up in the morning knowing my room was bugged. Everybody knew that. It was a special Westerner hotel. It was bugged. So I got up and I would walk over to the wall. And in Russian, I'd go, how you doing, guys? I hope you're up. I hope you had it slept well. Hope you're enjoying some coffee. Great to be with you today. And then I would sing uh, this song from the Psalms. Uh, in Hebrew, which is the way I learned it. And, it, you know, their idols are of gold and silver, uh, the, the works of man. They have a mouth, but they cannot speak. They have eyes and they cannot see. They have So I, it was my ode against idolatry, <laughs> which I would then sing to the wall in my hotel room. And that's in the film. <laughs> so you were deliberately taunting. Oh, totally, yeah. totally taunting them. By the end of my trip, I think they knew the song. <laughs> You're a dangerous man. I am a very dangerous man. (laughs) And I laugh a lot. That's why I'm really dangerous. Uh, Talk a little bit about anti-Semitism and how it is growing again. I mean, it's gone on for 3,000 years or more. Why now? After we fought World War II. Yeah, you'd think. uh, You know, and the Holocaust and everything. Why now? Uh, In the Passover service, it's called the Haggadah, and it's recited at the Passover Seder. Uh, in in Jewish homes, and uh, there's a line in it which is 2,000 years old. In every generation, there arises someone who wishes to annihilate us. And the Hebrew is amazing. It's annihilate, not oppress. Yeah. Annihilate. And I remember as a kid thinking, not after the Holocaust, the world has learned its lesson. And then sure enough, I was wrong, and the ancient rabbis who wrote that, they were right. And sure enough, now it's Iran. Iran is dedicated to annihilating the Jewish state and its inhabitants. So why? What's behind it? Okay, well, I wrote a book on anti-Semitism years ago. This is not an easy answer. To a Christian, I could say this because this will resonate. When I say it to secular audiences, I have to do a lot more explaining. I I am convinced that it has to do with the Jews being the chosen people. Uh, yeah. I, there is no rational explanation. Well, we certainly understand that. You know, uh, in, in uh, Fiddler on the Roof, Tevya, uh, the milkman, says, um, you know, pleads with God, why don't you choose somebody else for a while? Give us a break. And, and <laughs> Jews have always felt that because it's a burden. It is never, by the way, never did it imply Jews are better than anybody else. The Old Testament doesn't hold Jews as superior. It holds that God and the Torah are superior. 
a man named um, Ernest von den Haag, who was a great conservative thinker, not a religious man, for National Review. He wrote a book, The Jewish Mystique, which I always tell people, if you read one book about the Jews, that's the book. And I've written about it, so it's a very high recommendation. And he said, the Jews introduced into the world a judging God. And for this, they have never been forgiven. That's what I believe in the final analysis is what it is about. What's interesting to me is that racism has become hated in this country, if I can say that. Racism is not tolerated by the left or the right. It shouldn't be. And yet the left is very much involved in this anti-Semitism. I yes. didn't say that very well. Do you no, understand no, no, you said it very well. Well, the truth is, though, that uh, this is, I want to be very precise. Liberals and conservatives are against racism. The left is rooted in it. The left supports all black dormitories on college campuses. The left supports black graduation exercises at Harvard. Really? And Yes. There are about 70 universities with all black uh, dormitories. The fact that you said really shows that you're not a leftist. You and I th correctly think it's shocking that there would be a race-based dormitory and that it's considered progressive. I didn't know that. Oh, I yes. I mean, if That's you're a politician yes. you get tagged with being a racist, you're done. Yeah, but they don't consider that racist because they use the term utterly imprecisely. They use it to smear non-racists like us. I am called a racist for opposing black dormitories. The University of California has You're a list. called a racist. Oh, oh, Google has an internal memo that Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, and PragerU are Nazis. You're kidding me. Nope. We have a picture of the, of the actual email. Well, it's a fascinating uh, subject. Tell us uh, in closing or as we move on here about PragerU. Uh, you mentioned that in the report and in the comments. Well, uh, well uh, my dear friend and producer of my show, uh, Alan Estrin, came over to me on uh, one of our listener cruises about 10 years ago. He said, Dennis, what do you think of the idea of Prager University? Pretty much if Alan suggests anything to me, I say, fine, Alan. <laughs> but he doesn't joke. Alan hasn't told a joke since 1973. And, and uh, that's why we call him the living martyr. And, and so he wasn't joking. And... Uh, he had a brilliant idea. Let's take your ideas and put them in five-minute distillations, but not obviously not just with you, with, with a whole bunch of, of wonderful people with good values. And had he said to me, you know, I think we could get a million views a year, I would have said, oh, come on, Alan, from your, from your mouth to God's ears. And now we have a billion views a year. 65% of them are under 35 years of age. If you would walk with me in an airport, you would be stunned. Almost all of the people walking over to me are young people. I was at the Nashville airport two weeks ago. Eight people walked over to me. Seven of them were under 30 years of age. I just spoke to 1,200 young people in Romania, people watching a PragerU videos. And that's why they really, they don't like us because we, with pure reason, calm, civility, and honesty decimate left-wing arguments. We don't even use the word left almost ever. We, we decimate it by being positive. Here is why America has been a good country. Do you know we, we made a video with Victor Davis Hanson, yeah, great professor man. of classics. He is a great man. Yeah. And he's as sweet a man as exists. And he did this calm video, five minutes on the Korean War. And, and you two put that up on the restricted list. Why? Lest God forbid Americans and the world know that 37,000 Americans died to keep half of Korea free? It's, it's really vile what they're doing. And they have a particular animus to Israel. Half of the videos of the 15 are on the restricted list. But we're, we're marching forward. We, we're bigger every year. You got a lawsuit going. Doug, we have a not? lawsuit going because of this. Google is lying. Google says it's an open forum. It isn't. And people say, well, oh, it's a private group. They could censor all they want. It's not the government. They're right. But then they ha can't have it both ways. They can't censor all they want and call themselves an open forum. If they announce we are a left-wing forum, that ends the lawsuit. Just as the universities, they're phony. As I've said for years, what's the difference between a Christian seminary and a university? Here's the difference. 
the Christian seminary is honest. The university isn't. The Christian seminary announces the purpose of our school is to produce committed Christians. The university, its purpose is to produce committed leftists, but it denies it. Yeah. That's the reason that it's dishonest. If the university said we're here to indoctrinate people into leftism, that would end my critique of the university. It's the lie that they're intellectually yeah. alive that, that rankles me. Would you send your son or daughter to a liberal university? Providing they watched all the PragerU videos in advance. <laughs> That's what is, we are so lucky to be living at this time in America that if it weren't for the left and its hysterias, people would just be, they would hug each other at the airport. Nice people can do damage. And I figured out why. Nice is not the same as wise. Lack of wisdom creates evil, not lack of niceness. Mm, that's profound. It took me a lifetime to realize that. Why did all these nice people ruin the country? And by the way, where does wisdom begin? Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. That's what I realized when I was at Columbia. Why am I getting no wisdom? And then this verse came to me in Hebrew. And, and I'll say it in Hebrew because that's where it starts. Wisdom begins with fear of the Lord. And I realized, I know why there's no wisdom at Columbia. There's no God at Columbia. And there's no Bible. That's the reason I'm writing my Bible commentary. There is no wisdom in the Western world outside of the Bible. Yes, there are some great Greek writers and some great Roman writers, but you've got to go really far back. And they were rooted, at least, in their own Greek or, or Roman philosophy. Today, we have nothing. The post-Christian world, and I'm saying this as a Jew, the post-Christian world is bereft of wisdom. If you go to Proverbs 8, the second half of Proverbs 8, it says that I was there before the foundations of the earth, before the streams and the mountains. I was there with God before he did those things. And, and then it says, I, it's in first person, I am wisdom. Wisdom was with God mm. because it's an expression of his character. It's not something he made, it's something he is. And it, antedated the uh, creation of the universe. And that's why the laws of God are as inevitable. They're going to play out. Uh, they carry even more moral authority than creation in the physical world. You jump off a building, you're going to fall. But you break the laws of God, and it's as inevitable that it's going to happen to you. That's right. That's exactly and, right. And the word wisdom means I'm not sure lot. that the average college uh, student could spell the word. I'm not being cute. They don't know what it is. They, they've never heard it. We define it as seeing things from God's point of view. It's fine with me. Their alternative is to see things from the heart's point of view. A five-year-old kid in Christian or Jewish school knows not to trust his heart. A 50-year-old secularist still thinks trust your heart. Man, there's a lot of wisdom that's come out in this program. That's my it's a hope. pleasure to have you here, it's Dennis. It's an honor I, to be with you. I really enjoy talking to you, and I listen Thank to you. you often. Thank you again. And I uh, hope you'll come back. I'd love to. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, this is Dr. James Dobson again, and we've come to the end of the formal interview with Dennis Prager. Uh, when this interview was over, I turned to the audience and uh, asked if anyone wanted to pose their own question, and several did, and we recorded it. I'm gonna let you hear that now. This is for either of you, but I wanna know if either of you are willing to speculate on where this insanity started. I mean, over the last 10 years, on the campuses, things have amped up, but where do you think that it began? In a nutshell, it goes like this. As I said in my statement at the Senate, the left has never valued liberty. Liberals always have, conservative always have. The more the left takes over, the less liberty you have. To me, it is literally as simple as that. There is no place that the left runs where there is freedom. 
And the further left you go, the less freedom there is. You know, it's not really new, though. I'm old enough to have lived through the 60s, and it was pretty nasty then. That's right. It isn't new. That's exactly right. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Um, love the love the documentary. Um, one of my favorite quotes actually was, "Today's campus snowflake is tomorrow's teacher, judge, or elected official." Um, so, what's the next generation of leaders look like? Do you think coming like up? this one, hmm. except that they're they're getting more and more powerful and more ubiquitous. But the the Trump victory really set them back in terms of judges. And, and in terms of uh, Iran, in terms of Israel, and, and the, the hysteria uh, o- over uh, climate, I don't have any issue with science. I have an issue with hysteria. I have long, long, long ago uh, told people, only trust experts on data, but never on recommendations. Because they're very narrowly focused and they don't have a broad wisdom. Dennis, you did your radio program from our studio today, and yes. I was listening to you out there, and I wrote down a couple of quotes I would like you to elaborate on. Right. I thought they were wonderful. Thank you. You said that everything the left touches poisons it. It ruins. It poisons. Correct. That is the key to understanding modern life. There is no exception. From the U.S. women's soccer team to late-night television to pro football to art to music, to schools, there is nothing the left touches it doesn't ruin. And and I might add Christianity and Judaism. Okay, Pastor Prager, I have a question. Describe the difference between a fanatic and an activist and why it's important to have more activists to have discussion rather than fanatics who are violent. An activist literally means one who is active. I guess the best definition of a fanatic is someone who believes in things irrespective of reason and irrespective of morality. The consequences of their beliefs don't matter to them, only their beliefs do. That's my working definition of a fanatic. Define for us the difference between liberal and leftist. I have a five minute video at PragerU on, <laughs> on, with six, no, no, you should watch it, six examples of liberal left the difference. Race is the most obvious. Leftism believes in race. Liberalism doesn't believe in race. Liberalism believes race is not important. The left believes race is very important. That's why you can have the concept of a black who is conservative is called a race traitor. That is exactly what the Nazis would say. If a white was anti-Nazi, he was called a race traitor. It's, It's beyond belief that this is acceptable. Uh, capitalism is another one. Liberals were always pro-capitalism. And left was always anti-capitalism. Liberty. Liberals, when I was a kid, the Nazis marched in Skokie. Real Nazis with real swastikas and real uh, a Jew eliminationist hatred marched in Skokie because there were a lot of Holocaust survivors living there. So it's particularly cruel. And uh, all the liberals were for it. And, and I, I, as a Jew, I understood it. It, I hated their guts. I, I wanted the earth to open up like it did with Korach uh, and his rebels, but it didn't, and uh, so on. But nevertheless, in America, you are allowed to be a Nazi and march in a Jewish area. That's what America allows. America is the only country in, in the world that allows Holocaust denial. But not in Europe. You go to jail if you deny the Holocaust. This is a free country. The, the, so the left does not believe in freedom. And so I gave you race, I gave you uh, capitalism, I gave you freedom, America, liberals, liberals loved America. The left all over the world hates America. Mm. Uh, Barack Obama's famous phrase, uh, five days before he was elected in 2008, I play this on my radio show every month. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. Any person or thing you wish to fundamentally transform, you do not love. If you met a a man who said, you know, I really love my wife, but I would like to fundamentally transform her. Okay, why are you laughing? Because it's ludicrous. You do not love what you wish to fundamentally transform. The left hates America. Liberals loved America. God bless America was written by a liberal Jew. Okay? Mm. By the way, to show you, Jews go all over the place. Do you know that most of the classic Christmas songs were written by Jews? 
It's true. Yep. But now leftism is so poisoned to Jewish life that the Jew and, and Christians and, you know, non-Jews who are not Christian, you know, God Bless America is almost a fascist song in their minds. Well, let me bring this program to a close. You can contact us online at drjamesdobson.org if you would like to talk to us. With that, uh, God bless you all. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. Hi, this is Roger Marsh for Family Talk with some exciting news. We've selected 18 of the most popular broadcasts of the past year and present them to you together on six audio CDs in the 2019 Family Talk Best of Broadcast Collection. Join Dr. Dobson and many incredible guests like Dennis Prager, Rebecca Gregory, and Rabbi Jonathan Kahn in this compelling audio collection. You can get your CD set as our thank you for your gift of any amount in support of our ministry. Join Dr. Dobson in serving families. Call 877-732-6825 or visit Dr. James Dobson dot org.